Munson with Munson Music, and we're going to talk about how you play a song called Lifestyle by The Rich Gang. And we'll end up cabling this on 6 fret to kind of match the recording, but we'll walk through a couple things in reposition. And there's this really, really cool little melody actually that kind of happens at the very beginning. And if you wanted to follow those notes, I actually want to talk about some ways you could generalize chords with that too. You could start open B, and then second fret on the G, and then open D to second fret on the D, and you may want to kind of do that as a hammer on idea. And then we go to fourth fret on the D, and then two four is a hammer on the D to open G, open D, open G, open D, and then second fret on the G, open D, second on the G, first fret on the B, and then we almost start over again, kind of the open B, and there's this crazy cool quick piano lick where you could go seven on the high E to third fret on the high E string as a pull off, and then do that as a pull off to the open E. First fret on the B. I love that, like actually kind of that, that double pull off. And then we go to uh, open B, or a second fret on the G. And then open D to second on the D is kind of a hammer on idea. And then four on the D. And then there's this crazy little ar arpeggio at the very end where you can play third fret on the A, first fret on the D, fourth fret on the D, second on the G, first fret on the B, fourth fret on the B, second fret on the high E. And then slide that to fifth fret on the high E string. This is weird. We'll end up moving this with the capo, but all together on that, you get kind of that open B, two on the G string, and then O two four, two four O O O O two O two one open, seven three O one two. Or you could add some basses to this and you could do that hybrid picking using the pick for the basses, fingers for the lick. Or you could even try just finger style if you kind of dig on that too. So you could do the third fret on the A string with the open B, third fret on the A with the second on the G, O2 hammer on, and then on the fourth fret on the D you could add second on the A string, and then we'd have the open E with the open G, D, G, D, and then we'd have open D with the second on the G fret on the A for the open B, and then second fret on the G with the third on the A, and then the O2 hammer on on the D, two on the A string with four on the D, and then kind of working into that arpeggio, three, one, four, two, one, four, two, five, I know, I just gave you something crazy, it'd take months to work that out, right, but got a three and O, and then three and two, O2, two, two and four, two, four, open O, 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 and two, O, O, two, So you could generalize the chords that they're kind of backing that up and you start on a C major chord. I normally you do this first finger on the B first fret, second finger on the D second fret, and third finger on the A string third fret, and if you strum the A string to the high E string, that sounds a C major chord and it sounds really happy. Now you may also dig on lifting off the first finger and making that a C major 7, or you can add in the pinky on the B string 3rd for C major 9 and kind of say some things around it. And you'll definitely hear on the intro actually, it's almost like a C major 7 idea, 
and then you can kind of take the first finger and add it on the G2nd fret for kind of a G major 6 idea. And then from the C, actually, we can back the next, next chord we go to is kind of a B minor chord. There's a couple different ways you could kind of approach this. Normally you do it as a 2nd fret bar, 2nd finger on the B, 3rd fret, 3rd finger on the D, 3rd, 4th fret, pinky on the G, 4th fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds a B minor chord and it sounds really sad. Now you may also dig on lifting off the pinky and making that a B minor 7. Or another way to play B minor 7 is to do first finger on the A second, second finger on the G second, third finger on the high E second, kind of working the A string to the high E string. Or if you dig on that C major voice, you could kind of do first finger on the A second, second finger on the G second, third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third, kind of work that for your B minor. And that we from the other C major 9, oh, did we talk about that other C major 9? I've got first finger on the D second, second finger on the A third, third finger on the B third, pinky on the high third. And that way to that B minor, you can just kind of switch one and two. Kind of go into second fret, second fret. So that might make it an easier change for you. And then from the B minor, we'd be going to an E minor chord. I normally do this first finger on the A second, second finger on the D second. And if you strum all those together, it sounds an E minor chord and it sounds really sad. And you may also dig on leaving the third finger on the B third, pinky on the high third. We're going to have an E minor 7 change. And then from the E minor, we can go into a D major chord. And normally you do this first finger on the G second, second finger on the high E second, third finger on the B third. And if you strum the D string to the high E string, oh, the beautiful sounds. Now you may also dig on lifting the second finger. I'm going to the dangerous finger to lift. That makes a D sus 2. Or you can add in the pinky on the high E third, or the D suspended chord, and kind of say some things around the D. And then from the D, we'd be going back to our C major chord, and then some more C, and then we have our B minor chord. And, and on the B minor, you could even kind of take that B minor idea with three and four on the B and E. If you lift off the pinky randomly, it's a B minor seven, you, or a B minor eleven. You may kind of dig on that, leave the E open on the B minor two. But then there's this crazy change where we have that big arpeggio. You may want to kind of go into an E flat major chord. And normally, you would do this as kind of a six fret bar. Third finger over the D, G, and B. It's kind of the one way to do E flat. We're going to be so high up with the capo there. There's a really cool, easy way to do it. We can take the D major shape, slide it over one fret to three and four. So I got first finger on the G third, second finger on the high E third, third finger on the B string fourth fret. The top three strings kind of make an E flat major. So we kind of dig on that. So all the way through that, that and you, there are a lot of different strumming options we'll talk about. But you could even try just a down count idea. C two three four five six seven eight C E minor one two three four five six seven eight and the E minor D would have so you have E two three four D two three four C C major six B e minor and E flat or one of my favorite strum patterns for a four four like this is down down up up down up so you took the C and just tried that a lot. You have down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, 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 down. Now the weird part is that E minor D kind of half. So on that part you may want to do just a down, down up on each of those chords. Or you can split the pattern and do the E minor with the down, down, up, and then go to the D for the up, down, up. Kind of split the pattern that way. So you have C. Too, and one of my favorite uh, strum patterns is a 16th note strum pattern. And what I mean by that is if you're tapping your foot to the beat, right now we're dividing that beat into two parts with our down, down, up, up, down, up. So we're going to one, two, one, two, and that's called an eighth note. What a 16th note is, is where you divide that into four parts. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And one of my favorite 16th note strum patterns is a long down, 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 up, up, down, down, up, down. Up. And what I mean by that is if you take the C and do a down for four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's what you're doing on the first beat. Then on the second beat, you're doing a down on one, down on three, up on four. So you're going one, two, three, four, down, 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 down. Then on the third beat, you do an up 
on two, down on three. So going one, two, three, four, one, up, down, one, up, down, one, up, down. And then on the last beat, you'd be going down, up, down, up, right along with the one, two, three, four. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So all together, you got down. pattern when we get to the E minor D, you may want to do just a long down, down, down up on each of those chords, or you can kind of split the pattern and do the E minor with the down, 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 up, and then go to the D for the up, down, down, up, down, up. So if you try it that way, you have the C. Sixteenth, it could be a lot of fun. Is a down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down to sixteenth note strum. And what I mean by that is on the first beat you do a down on one and an up on four. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Then on the second beat you do the up on two, down on three. So we're going to be one, two, three, four, one, up, down, one, up, down, one, up, down. And then on the last beat you go down, up, down, up, right along with the one, or on the third beat you go up on two, up on four. So we're going one, two, three, four, one, up, up. I guess that's the weird part right there. Up, up. And on the last beat, you do the down, up, down, up, just like the other pattern. So down, 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 down. So all together, you got down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, The weird part on the E minor D is you may want to do the E minor with the down, up, up, and then go to the D for the up, or the down, up, up, down, down. So E minor down, up, up, D on the down, up, up, down. So we tried the intro bridge that way. We had the C. And then we go into our main verse chorus idea, which kind of starts second on the D string, second on the A string, third foot on the A string, and then some more third foot on the A, and then open D. So we got kind of an E, B, C, C, D, E, B, C, C, D, which you could kind of work a couple different ways rhythmically. If you're digging on the down idea, you can actually do E minor for two, B minor for one, and then C for five, three, four, five, and then C for another five, one, two, three, four, five, and then go to the D for three. So it's a little weird timing wise. E minor, one, two, B minor, C, C, one, two, three, four, five, D, B minor, B minor, C, C, D. Or if you're doing the down, down, up, up, down, up, you can do E minor with the down, and then the B minor with the down, and then go to the C for your up, up, down. And that's the weird part. It's the E minor, B minor, C. Then you have C with the down, down, up. And then we go to the D for the up, down, up, at the very end. So E minor, B minor, C, C down, down, D, up, down, D minor, C, C down, D, up, down. Now randomly you could or just work as an E minor C idea too, if you just want to completely ignore the B minor. That's cool. Um, let's see. Um, or with, if you're digging on the 16th, so you can do the E minor with the down, E minor with the down, down, C on the up, up, down, down, up, down, up. And then do the C with the down, 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 up, up, and then go to the D for the down, down, up, down. It's a little weird rhythmic there too. E minor down, B minor down, now C on the up, up, down, down, up, down, C down. E 
minor with the down, B minor on the up, up, and then hit the C with the down, up, up, down, down. Instead of starting on a C major chord, they're actually starting on an F sharp major chord. So to play along with the recording, what you want to do is take a capo, and you put the capo on 6th fret, and now your C is really an F sharp major, and your B minor is really an E sharp minor, or would you call that an F minor? Either way, it's all good. And then uh, the D is really a G sharp major, and your E flat is really an A major chord. And then the, the C major is really the F sharp, and then the E minor is really an A sharp minor. But to take it from the very beginning, you may want to kind of, kind of work on that intro, kind of that three note, and then three and two, go to two and four, two four, oh no, oh oh, oh two, oh two, oh two, one, three, open. And then this is the weird part, now you're going 11 to ninth fret pull off. As far as real frets go, for what was that 7 3 0 1 kind of an idea, and then we got the 3 and 2, and then the 0 2, 2 and 4, and then we got our crazy arpeggio at the end 3 1 4 2 1 4, and then 2 5 is really doing 8th fret to 11th fret, so it's a little weird too. 3 2, 0 2 2 and 4. You could back that up with the chords. You can do it any of those ways we've been talking about. So kind of just doing the down idea, or the down, down, up, up, down. Until we get back to our bridge part. Now, one other thing I think about adding to the song though is bass notes. And a lot of times on that first down, 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 up, up, down, you can put a bass for the chord. So on the C, you'd have the A for the bass. On the B minor, you'd have the A for the bass. On the E minor, you'd have a low E for the bass. On the D, you'd have the D for the bass. On the E flat, you could kind of fake a bass on the G string if you wanted to kind of work that out. Um, so through that intro part, actually, when our bridge comes back, we could try that. 
have the bass down, up, up, down, up. And on the E minor, you have just a bass down up on those chords, or you can still kind of split it if you have to take off that. So we tried it that way. You had the C. Try and add basses to that too. So the E minor, B minor, C. how you get strung through lifestyle by the rich gang. So good luck. <laughs>